Let me bring you to. Hey, Mayor. How are you, how are you sir? sir? I'm good. How are you today? I'm uh, ready to take you to the Green Bar reunion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Sounds good. Uh, if I could just touch on just a couple things real quick. You know, we've got some wonderful people here that are going to come up and, I guess, take some pictures with the bill sign, bills, bills signings. You know, we have uh, a wonderful senator and a wonderful delegate. You know, uh, Paul has taken a lead in, in this in a lot of ways. And I'm sure Sue has too, but, uh, but uh, Delegate Espinosa, what... What great work he's done, what great work Sue Klein's done, and I don't know how many others, but what great work you've done. This is so much a blooming no-brainer, but some way, somehow, it's fallen through the cracks. You know, you know, child, and I want to say it correctly, but the prevention, rather, of, of, chill, of child sex abuse, abuse. You know, I'm a coach, and I'm in the school system. A lot of times, they used to be in, the, in there five hours a day, six days a week for almost five months out of the year. And so, and I've had the opportunity to, because I'm a teacher, I've had the opportunity to substitute teach in a lot of different places. And, Along the ways, a lot of times I would be substitute teaching in special ed classes. and So you see a real cross-section all across the board of a lot of kids and, and a lot of parents and a lot of different situations. It's hard for us to imagine really and truly that a child being abused. But at the same time, until you really know it, it's just almost like it, well, it really can't happen. And so therefore, we oftentimes dismiss it. And oftentimes, we don't realize the magnitude of the problem. We really think it's the exception rather than the rule. And so we don't address it. Well, I think that's what we're doing right here. You know, we're going to all class, all schools for K through 12, we're going to, they have to receive sexual abuse education at least once a year. What will that do for us? Well, basically, it will probably open the eyes and, and give those that are maybe sheltered in some way the opportunity to come forward and talk to us. And then it will give us the opportunity to try to address it and stop it. Now the other thing is we're going to change the reporting period from that has to be done within 48 hours to 24 hours. Now again, of all things that are out there in the world that we do legislation on in this, in this area of the world, I mean this would be like saying, you know, well let's decide that we're going to breathe tomorrow. You know, because this is absolutely a no-brainer. Now, some way, somehow, it's fallen through the cracks, and we're trying to fix it. And you all know, especially those of you that are here, you all know the magnitude of this problem, and it's real. It's not the exception. It happens an awful lot, and it's a crying, pitiful shame, and we've got to try to do something about it. So please, come up here. Join me. We'll sign with great pride. And Paul or Sue, either one of y'all, if you'd like to talk or... Well, just briefly, Governor, just will thank you for signing uh, these two pieces, uh, two important pieces of legislation. As uh, chair of the House Education Committee, it's been my honor to co-chair the task force on the prevention of sexual abuse of children. And you see the task force, a number of the, the uh, task force members here. Sure. We have representatives from really all of the various stakeholders, every, every, uh, everywhere from those who work directly with uh, uh, children that unfortunately have been the victims of sexual abuse. We also have uh, representatives of our uh, Department of Health and Human Resources, our school systems, the legal community, 
just a really a, just the, the, the entire gamut uh, of, uh, of stakeholders on, uh, uh, regarding this important issue. The two bills that you're about to sign, uh, Governor Justice, represent the two top recommendations of the task force that were proposed in a report to the legislature just prior to the session this year. And uh, very excited that you're going to be signing those two, two priority bills today. Well, great job. I mean, that's all there is to it. And it's been uh, long overdue in my book. But this is the first one, Bill 465. It's done. You know what I don't understand is this. There are so many bills that come to me. I oftentimes think, how in the world? What have we been doing for 100 years? I mean, really and truly. I mean, you know, there's, but the world changes and and we have to address. And but uh, there's so many things that come, and and it's like, dag, how in the world has this fallen through the cracks? But you're to be saluted and celebrated in many ways to bring it to the attention of these great legislatures, and them spearheading it and getting it to me, because I truly want what you want. I want things better, and especially better for our kids. Thank you, Governor. And let me tell you this, too, while, while we're passing out accolades, these two people that are standing right beside me are superstars. And whether it be Senator Klein or Delegate Espinosa, they're superstars. And they do great work. And I always refer to them as Sue and Paul because they're my friends. And I just, uh, I know how you feel, but uh, they truly are Trojans in our state government. And I thank you. And I thank all of you. Thank you. Okay. Done. Okay. Thank you.